welcome to today's episode of Bump to Business Owner. I am your host, Caroline Marshall, and today let's give a huge welcome to Susie Lodge. She is the founder of and director of Wiki Places for Kids, the Wiki Mama Network, and is also a consultant in marketing, events, and social media. Not only that, but Susie is also a radio presenter, days out specialist, and content creator on social media. Oh, and let's not forget, she is also a mummy to three children. So I'm personally fascinated to hear how Susie manages all of this. Susie, welcome. Thank you for joining today. Oh, thanks for having me. Really excited to be here. <laughs> um, if anyone knows me and Susie have known each other a while now. We were just talking about, for I'll say on the podcast, is that um, Susie reached out. I joined her network a few years ago and it was a, I was in a particularly particular place like on maternity leave all the pregnancy hormones going around and not having a great experience in another network so she um I've got a personal thank you for Susie for being so welcoming to me and being such a super connector oh it's, it was lovely to have you so I think um the, the thing is about the community is it's such a warm welcoming bunch of ladies that are all in very different stages of their business so people who are literally starting out you know and um just maybe just in the like setting the seeds of their of their business or people who are um you know thriving and you know in three figure businesses and and doing amazingly well uh, well three figure six figure businesses um you know and and doing and doing great so it's like it's such a nice warming like come come and join with us and you know welcoming community that's definitely the feeling I got and um so Susie I like to start a lot of these podcasts because I love hearing about mums who started their business and what was the career path that led to you being a business owner so uh, what's your background so I have been a program director for um big agencies in London big digital agencies in London for about 20 years uh, so I started my career off in London I was at um, a little printing house and ended up working through some ma- ma- massive agencies like MNC Saatchi um, and then to loads of the WPP agencies like AKQA and Wonderman Thompson um, and basically I'm like an uber project manager so I can like join all the dots and bring all the people together and I guess that's why I'm kind of good at what I do now because ever since I was you know in my early 20s that's what I was doing but basically I um yeah I bring digital product products and projects to fruition with huge clients like um I don't know mini spec savers Aston Martin BMW BlackRock like just tons the Olympic Committee I worked on some huge brands um like in the time that I was working agencies and then what happened was I um I basically was on maternity leave with my second child, Matilda, and I was, I think, yeah, I was on maternity leave and I was looking for things to do online. And I kind of thought I was like quite disillusioned with some of the stuff available online to find things to do. So obviously everyone was like, oh, go on Facebook, you can find things. But the thing is with Facebook is you find something, you can never find it again. You can never refine that post nightmare. Um. Or at least you couldn't then. I suppose it might be slightly more evolved now, but I still find it very difficult to refind, you know, things there. Um, other massive platforms, Mumsnet and NetMums, they're just not my bag. I think there's a place for everything, but just not for me, that one. Um, and I don't really like that kind of chat forum type thing to find things. Anyway, so I was online looking for things to do and I just was massively underwhelmed. And I was thinking to myself, God, you know what we need? We need like a trip advisor for parents looking for things to do with their kids. And then I was like, after a bit of time, I was like, do you know what? I'm going to make one. <laughs> and so, and I did. And then because of my, you know, my experience in digital marketing and I knew how to build a platform, I knew the process behind getting a website live and building one bespoke. I didn't add, and mine is all bespoke built. It's not built on for platform um and you know I had designer contacts I had it like already a network of people that could help me so I basically just went about building it and after about a year of um kind of doing stuff in the background having you know bringing up my little one um and you know I I ended up basically putting a site live and so that kind of all happened in 2017 and it was all on the basis of like you know we kind of need things to do and I wanted something that was entirely parent recommended and something that was kind of different to TripAdvisor in that I feel like TripAdvisor is now quite a tricky one in that it's almost 50-50 good and bad. So you're you're trying to weigh up all those sort of negative reviews with the positive reviews and then, you know, trying to figure out there what where you land with a place. Whereas 
Wiki Places for Kids is meant to be a bit of a shortcut for parents who are time poor, don't want to waste their money, you know, don't want to waste their time. Um, and they all, and you know, we're, we're in a place of um, much more than ever of looking for recommendations for everything. I think you're, you know, you're very likely to read reviews and you're very likely to ask a friend um, for a, a suggestion on where to go locally. And so what I created essentially was a hub for the word of mouth. Um, and a place and a, and a kind of platform really similar to TripAdvisor, except for no negative, all the positive. And the idea being that if places started to get tons and tons of bad reviews and ended up being negative, it just came off because people haven't got time. Yeah. So it's a short list, essentially, of the best places to go around the UK. So if you're on a... Um, um, uh, this is Wiki Places for Kids, by the way, not the, ne- not the network, just to be clear. <laughs> um, um, but um, yeah, if you're going away and you, you know you're going to visit someone, you're like, I have no idea where you know where to go with the kids this weekend. We're going off to like say Norfolk for the weekend, but I don't know the area. And you know, you everybody knows sort of locally where to go, but they don't know where to go if they're traveling. And it's a perfect thing because you've got three days to maybe do two or three excursions, and you just want a short list of where everybody else says is great, and it's there for you. Exactly. Oh, that's, and I guess also the great thing about it is, so with TripAdvisor, you know, it's for everyone. But with you know, as a parent, we have different needs, especially when you've got <laughs> little ones. You might need bottles warmed up, or somewhere with great changing places, or somewhere the kids can literally just run and it's safe. And that's exactly. the great thing about it, isn't it? It's that you know, somewhere like this that caters for those needs. And I definitely should be checking it out more when I'm in places that I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. I think it's because, you know, you're looking for um, that's what people are sharing. So it's like it's normal mums like you and I who add the places on there. So it's like it's not me going around and just selecting and adding. It's actually parents who are putting their reviews up and giving their review of of, of the facilities and, and saying what's kind of good and bad about it. So that actually parents go in with their eyes open as well. For example, you might say, I don't know. I'm just going to make it up, but like Leeds Castle, absolutely wonderful, beautiful grounds, incredible house, great playground, really amazing. But when we went to the cafe, there was a 20 minute wait for food and there was only three high chairs, by which time, you know, my kids had had a total meltdown. So you don't then think I'm not going to go to Leeds Castle. But what you think is, do you know what? Maybe I'm better off not trying to go to the restaurant. I'm going to take a packed lunch that day. Um, I'm or, you know, I'm not even going to try to go for a high chair. We're just going to go in. We're going to take something out. You just kind of go a bit more knowledgeable about where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's so helpful. So tell me, how did that go? Um, so you're on maternity leave. Did you decide to leave your job? How did that kind of story go from being employed to self-employed? Yeah, so um, at the time that I was um, also looking looking after Tilda and creating this business, I, I did get this idea that I wanted to do something for myself. I think I had been, I live in Milton Keynes, which isn't very far from London really at all. We have amazing commuter um, lines from here, which are, you know, 35 minutes or so into London. But reality is that door to door, it was probably up to a two hour door to door you know once I've left here got to the station dudley 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 and I got to the got to work and I was finding it really difficult as a mum of two even to do this like to do this commute I was the one I was I felt like I was the mum who was literally screeching up there at first thing in the morning to drop them off screeching up to Wolverton to get onto the train on time leaving at half past four ish to make sure that I could then get home in time for six o'clock to pick them up and my kid was the one with the you know, holding their coat and bag with this person looking at you kind of like, I never actually got fined, but that constant threat of being fined for being late to pick up. But it was just either the every guilty feeling, feeling, isn't it? When you're that yeah. mum, we've all, uh, me and my friends have spoken about it. When you're the one whose child is like on their own with the coat, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah, you exactly. Get feeling, you? And you just constantly feel like you're always in the wrong place. So, you know, you feel guilty for the for, for your work situation. You feel guilty for the children. My kids were definitely doing at some point, you know, like 10 hour days in nursery, which I don't think, to be honest, is never done any of them any harm. And they've all done it. So it's um it's fine. But it was also a point where I was like, I'm just run ragged and I'm not even enjoying it. I don't even love what I'm doing anymore. So I just very much wanted to. 
I had these romantic ideas too of like going and doing it on my own. You know, I kind of saw the birth and regeneration or generation of um, uh, not on the high street. And I was like, oh, I wish I'd thought of that. That's such a good idea, you know? And I think that's in a way where my platform came from, but with obviously a different, completely oh, different angle. I love that. That's yeah. great for people to see if they're inspired by other ideas. Yeah. Doing it differently kind of thing. And, you know, I, I love the founders uh, of not on the high street and, Obviously, they've sold and made millions and, you know, moved on. Um, but also Holly, I find, is quite an, an inspirational figure for me now as well. So she's created that huge platform. She's had a massive success and she's moved on to do her, her own um, uh, and other businesses. And also she is a massive supporter of small businesses, isn't she? And her own small business network and um, and craft crafters and 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 female founders as well I, th- I think um so I I really loved that as a as a concept um and I just desperately was seeking that um freedom I suppose to choose where how I manage my day and how I earn my money um but that said it you know I'm I'm now so when was that 2017 you know I'm a good six seven years into my journey and it's ups and downs we've had this you know covid in the middle which was just through the cat amongst the pigeons hugely especially for the industry that i was trying to thrive in with days out obviously everything's yeah. shut so you know i'm often like in this place of god wouldn't regular income you knew exactly how much was coming in every month be just exactly wouldn't that be better you know and it's like that toss up isn't it of you know you think that what you it's it's not it's not frying pan into the fire always but it there is that what you what you let go of by being employed um, and the stress is there, you do sort of pick up a new, a new set of yes. stress, which are... No, but I love that. That's real talk. Cause it's not like, you know, we're all here living this flexible life. It's different stresses and, and it's, you know, up to, it's up to you if you're the person that's better off with those stresses versus the employee stresses and not everyone yeah. is, but so the people that come on this podcast tend to be um, yeah. those ones and so by the time you went to self-employed did you have your third child or did you have your third child after that no so what happened um I'm just trying to think no so I have actually just to give some even more context to all this I've actually been self-employed since 2012 so I have always oh, wow. been I've been freelance since 2012 yeah. so but it felt um but I had a regular running contract in in a in a place for the whole of the time from 2012 pretty much through to not the same place but different places 2012 right through till 2017 2018 so so, is that quite common in that industry yeah so I was freelancing in agencies and it was just you know you I was in there for about six months to a year or longer and it just was you know it was great um and I have these sort of long-term positions um and there is that sort of stress when it comes to an end you know like god what am I going to do next but because it's because I mean this was also before IR35 and um those rulings came in and just have made it slightly more awkward and you know for, for freelancers um so it was a really lucrative time if I'm completely honest it was a really great time I was pre-children for most of it and I made great money I was able to do five days a week I didn't have this stress then as well of having to be back for the pickups and so it was a really good way to start but then I think I still I was trying to build wiki but it was in no way near a financial state to kind of go set to go um solo with it um so I basically had it as a a side hustle I suppose well I was trying to build this up along the side and then eventually um I had a contract that was more local to me so I was working locally in a contract um and then I stopped for maternity leave with Lily who's my third child and that was in 2018 um and she and I guess that restarted a whole new chapter. So I I had made a decision back in about 2017. I didn't really want to be working in London as much anymore, partly to do with all that stress, partly to do with the fact that there were these bombings on London, <laughs> on London Bridge. And there was just a little bit of a stress about, you know, that. But that said, you know, that's not... Um, that doesn't worry me now about going to London at all. It's not something I think about. But at the time it was, I think, as a as a much younger mum and a mum of much younger children, it was really 
you know, I remember re- being really quite frightened uh, being in London on the day of both bombings that happened in, on the tube and the one that happened in London Bridge, or not the bombing, but like the when the person was attacked, mm. the terrorist attack on London Bridge. I was there in London at the time, and, uh, and it was frightening being a mum of, you know, little ones and thinking... You know, there was a, the bus, that one that happened as well. Sorry, at Tavistock yeah. Square that happened when I was in London. And you just changed, don't you, as a mum? Like all the things that I, I, you know, didn't have any fear of before just suddenly became much deeper rooted with bigger consequences and all of those things. So anyway, I managed to get a job locally um, and then stopped um, that just to have to have Lily. And that was my year, really, where I managed to sort of build a child for the first year and like have the other two and really try to build Wiki. I also got into the NatWest Accelerator program, um, which is a nationwide accelerator, which anybody can apply to um, if you are at a position where your business is established and ready to accelerate. It's not for for people who haven't yet started um, unless anything's changed there since I did it so I got onto the NatWest Accelerator and it really felt like things were really like moving moving forwards um, and this all happened in that maternity year of 2018 and things were going super super well and um, I managed to get uh, clients that I'd been looking for like looking to work with for ages and you know some big names like um, Alton Towers, Diggerland, Bewilderwood and um, National Trust, um, Parks Trust, loads of um, kind of big, uh, well-known, you know, UK-wide sort of names and also brands that I loved and really wanted to work with. Um, and then so we're talking about 2019. So we're going to talk about 2018 into 2019 now. And then we all know then what happened at the beginning of 2020. So I was still on the accelerator at this point. Oh, wow. uh, and then, yeah, and... I was still on it actually when we went into the lockdown um and I guess I found lockdown very difficult if I'm really honest I found it very difficult I had a quite young child who was only well she'd just become one and a bit I suppose when we went into lockdown so she very much was a child that I kind of became you know a baby she was a baby during you know the first year but like in, during the lockdown she was doing that one she was in that one till two year and yeah. that's when they really start to learn to socialize and so I would say to an extent that she is a lockdown baby that yeah. but she's kind of she's okay now but I think that you know that's the time when they're when they're starting to walk and when they're starting to crawl, starting to run, to, and that's when you really want to be out and doing things, going to classes, doing that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, I I found lockdown difficult because we had two children at school age, one who was in the reception and one in year one, I think it was, um, and they, it was like that really foundational learning time, and I was in charge of that while also having a baby and also having my own business that I was trying to keep afloat and not just you know so many businesses actually folded during lockdown because one the the founder just could not stretch themselves across it or because the business had you know had no custom yeah. and and honestly I had no custom so as soon as everything went into um shutdown like lockdown my business shut down overnight oh my goodness um, but this really quite fascinating serendipitous thing happened and like I'm quite a spiritual person so I so like go with me with this but um no I'm was, with you I'm there <laughs> it was quite amazing. just before lockdown um I got offered a contract with Wonderman Thompson uh, again like one of the big companies that I'd been I'd worked with before through a friend that I, I knew really well she said I've got somebody off for three weeks um who and can you cover is there anything you can do to cover it and it was at a time pre-lockdown pre-covid even you know it was like january and you know what we were all just in such denial weren't we We were seeing on the news we were like it's never going to be a big deal yeah yeah case scenario it's going to be a three-week lockdown do you remember that (laughs) (laughs) wow our lives will change for a couple of weeks (laughs) yeah totally we're like oh we'll have to rethink stuff for a bit um anyway um Sorry, you're talking so much. Need to need a drink. No, um, but we, um, yeah. So two, two or three weeks before that, I got offered this job, and I was like, oh, I don't know. Oh, it's really annoying. I'm so busy. Got all the accelerator stuff. How am I going to do that? How am I going to manage the things I'm doing? Da, 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 da. And I just thought, oh. Then I thought, do you know what? Actually, the injection of cash that I can get for that three weeks 
actually that will take um, some pressure off for a minute. Um, it was quite, quite close after Christmas. And I thought, do you know what? Do you know what? I'll take that. I'll figure it out. I'll just take it. And I was actually in role in, in this contract at the point that Wonderman Thompson started to stop everyone coming into the office, that everything started to work from home, that this huge transformation happened. And long story short, I ended up in role. I don't know how, like why, but I ended up in that role for at least six weeks. And then that paused. And then I had the summer holiday, which was the most incredible summer ever, if you remember. Like, do you remember how lovely it was? Um, with the children and then I got offered another contract and I honestly believe that you know I'm a I believe in God so I believe that 100% I was being looked after in this in this instance that I that I was offered something at a time when obviously you know the universe had different plans and knew what was going to happen Um, so luckily I had these contracts that that kind of speckled all the way through but it was still a crazy time where I was not amazing, an amazing teacher to the kids. Yeah, that's what I want to ask. How are you? So you not only did have this business that obviously I know um, didn't happen during COVID, but you had three kids, one at baby stage and homeschooling and the contract. So you did that as well. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Amazing. So, but and- you know. Uh, yeah that's incredible kind of thing to and it was during covid then that i then started a new business i suppose which was the wiki mama network that's what i was going to say so how did that come around as well (laughs) you know i was like i had it easy being pregnant with a child starting one business (laughs) um well see my dad is an entrepreneur and um he had gone from normal you know employed work when I was a kid to then starting his own business and he obviously had a like really entrepreneurial streak in him and I could see how although my dad worked so hard so it wasn't necessarily the balance that I was looking for from working for myself but I could see how for us as a family that him working for himself had benefited us I suppose at least financially we'd been able to move to a bigger home and um have different things and do different things and I suppose I I've always maybe seen that that maybe with work working for somebody else that you might hit a ceiling to a certain extent whereas you know that whereas with what my dad my dad showed me that something else um and I must have that in entrepreneurial side to me as well um but what really happened in lockdown, so that's why I think I was always like building my own thing and wanted all of that. But in lockdown, I, I guess I guess the loneliness really hit me hard. So I am an extrovert. I get my energy massively from other people. I especially get my energy from women, if I'm completely honest, like my female friendships and connecting and talking. And like I love the I love being on a podcast, you know, because although we're not in the same room today, we're you know we're chatting and get to know each other better that's what I'm learning from this it's quite selfish the podcast yeah no I love it um I also have my own radio show and podcast and it's for exactly the same reason it means that on a weekly basis I get to sit and listen to someone (laughs) and be like oh it's like a conversation but I and and I just I guess I really recognize that in myself during lockdown because I haven't really had a chance to notice that if I'm honest before life was so busy doing this doing that and when it was all taken away and stripped back I just realized that for me, especially, and this is no reflection of my love for my family, not really anyway, but, um, but it, I just didn't get my energy from being in the home and being surrounded by the kids. And if anything, I felt more drained as a parent and as a human and as a woman, um, I suppose, in that environment. And so what I ended up doing was I recognized quite quickly that I was talking still quite a lot in Instagram DMs and here and there with people who also I knew were in the same position as me who um, were probably like one man band type situation. They didn't have a team, so they weren't having Zoom calls with teams. They weren't kind of finding those connections. But there were other mums who were trying to manage all the shizzle at home and keep a business from, from you know, falling over. Mm. And for me, it wasn't even trying to, I wasn't even trying to drive sales or do anything like that. It was just like, I need to keep the lights on. Otherwise, I'm, there will be nothing for me after this. Yeah. Um, so I so what I did was I just basically reached out to everyone who I knew who I was kind of friendly with in my 
um, I suppose, wiki world of connections. And I was like, right, this is what I'm doing. I'm creating a little network of mums in business. I'm going to stick us all in a WhatsApp group. And basically the point of it's going to be that when you're having a down day, we're going to lift you up. We're going to be stronger together. We will, you know, if you need help, we're going to just be here for each other. And we, and I basically created this little thing. And then do you remember um, Clubhouse? <laughs> Yeah. Remember the flash in the pan that was Clubhouse? <laughs> yeah, I don't think I, what was Club? I, I was it like a listening thing as well? Because I feel like I downloaded it and then had no energy to actually open it. <laughs> open it exactly. So what it was was it? Um, it was kind of a breath of fresh air at a time when Instagram, like you know how it, Instagram and Facebook are just like life draining sometimes aren't they because you throw so much energy into it and then you know and and when when instagram was first launched it was a photo sharing platform if you remember back and back to the day of what it was instagram was a was a connection point a directory of people you knew and now they are these other absolutely different beasts you know you have to basically be a film officer you know to to be able to create reels and you know it can't just be you know bog standard taken a nice photo type thing it's not that any and even if you had managed to crack the algorithm for 10 minutes they do something else to make it harder and so suddenly there was clubhouse where yes there were some people that were all about the following and all about that kind of thing but it was such a different platform it was all about audio so you would join rooms virtually there was no seeing there's no video there was no and it was literally (laughs) joining a room and it was all about the chatting and I think overall you know that was one of the things that really we missed I think was actually using our voices and hearing other people's yeah definitely. hearing it you know are not just the Dan, can I have another snack please? you know not those voices <laughs> um and, and, and your own voice as well god I just was the worst version of myself honestly when I'm in lockdown you know I look back and I think poor bloody kids you know like t-h-e we've just been over this <laughs> you know I just remember losing my rag over because the kids you know we'd just been trying to learn something and it was like we've just done this and like you know I know it's awful but I know there'll be millions of other people out there who just were like that was me that exactly was me. so thank you for sharing because it really is the truth I, I mean if I'm going to be honest like I you know I was pregnant and then with my toddler I remember my husband like literally had to separate us at one point because he was having the time he was 18 months himself so having the time tantrums and I couldn't deal with it and it just got too intense it was like we just not be together for like five minutes it's it it's difficult I think that you know as well if you're if your children are like you and if they've come from you they might well be but I noticed it massively and I'm noticing it so much more now as well with my nine-year-old he's like me he gets his energy from other children he loves you know counterparts basically who want to do the same thing as him and who can match his level of energy and that sort of thing you know and I'm with me I I'm obviously somebody that really enjoys the connection the conversation the sharing the the sharing of experience experiences the the combined moaning that you might do together you know to like to meet each other in a place and go god yeah well thank god you feel that too because that's how I feel and la 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 you know anyway so um so it was difficult and I and but so what happened was I but created this wonderful group and on clubhouse I'd have these wind down Fridays where we'd basically I'd be like right everyone go and get a drink we're going to meet at five and we're going to talk about the successes of our week and we're going to talk about you know anything that you want to share or anything you've launched or let's just like talk about it, what we've all achieved um, and then that also then turned into um, in, um, Zoom calls, which became um, accountability sessions on Monday mornings. Like, right, guys, what are we going to try and get? What we're going to achieve this week? You know, what you're going to set out? Let's put it out to the universe that you want to get X, Y, and Z done. Da, 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 da. And then, and all this was free at this point because I wasn't. I kind of I loved the idea of building my own network. I'd been in other groups um, that I felt a bit disillusioned by in the past, where certain setups and the ways it was managed were not met, maybe for me. They just weren't necessarily for me. And I and I was like, right, do you know what I really want to do is build an amazing community where everyone knows each other, where everyone actually can think. If if, if somebody outside of the network goes, do you know what I need a social media manager? They're like, do you know what I know someone, and that within the network that they're like they're now paying to be part of that they actually recommend and support that person because what happened eventually was we I'd been doing it for about six months and I thought it was across the board with all of my business activities I remember thinking to myself 
if I don't put a value on my time and on what I'm doing, then no one else is. It, you know, that that thing that we all have maybe, or maybe not everyone, but the thing that I definitely had was that if I show people what I can do for free, eventually they'll pay me for it. Oh, I'll do this as a freebie, you know, blah, blah, thinking that that would turn into paid work. And actually, if I've got one massive tip for anybody who's starting out in business here, never do anything for free if you can absolutely avoid it, because it very rarely goes from free to paid. If you want to do anything, offer a discount if you know on it to get get into you know get your foot through the door. But what I did wrong a lot was to do things for free. But having said that, I did then eventually convert the network from a free um, network into a paid. And yes, lots of people dropped off because that they weren't in it for for a paid you know for, for for paying. But lots and lots of people stayed, and now it's growing and growing and growing. We've had I think three new members over the last three days. It's like it's it's getting to a certain point, and it's and it's really great. And it the, and the purpose is um quite different to other networking. Like I said, it's um it's very much for people who maybe feel quite lonely in business they might be one man bands they're quite small businesses they don't know how to connect they feel quite shy they don't necessarily like feel they know how to put themselves out there um they would never be the sort of people that walk into a networking room and do the elevator pitch you know shoulder pads heels fake it before you make it type situation but they actually want what they feel is genuine real community around them where people care about them where they can ask whatever questions seem silly to them that day um we have like experts in the group across so many fields um to, a few of them would be like pr social media accountancy law um uh, we've got manufacturing experts we've got um you know people almost in every field and at every stage so if you've got a question about anything not just to do with business i suppose but if you know you need like to get an advice on family law or something like that wills etc then there's somebody there yeah. to answer any question um yeah there's so much we do face to face like um networking meetups we have co-working groups and uh, which is so lovely uh, we have a co-working session where you, you know you spend most of your time on the kitchen table working on your own it's just so nice to come and sit off so nice I joined one on Friday and it is like I just needed to see some faces to get some <laughs> social media content done and so yeah. what would be your advice to someone uh, you know I feel definitely can feel I felt this when I was employed, I felt I didn't belong in networking groups and things. And I think sometimes employed people should go to these networks if they know they're going, yeah. yeah, for whatever reasons they feel they need it for, whether it's because they're going to start a business one day or literally because they just need that support in their role and progression. What would be your advice for like people that were like me five years ago? <laughs> yeah, join 100% I mean we have um just had um a couple of women actually join who are ones in the NHS one is um employed within a big law group um and I think people should never underestimate themselves everyone has a network of people that they know so the value that you can add alone to a networking group is massive because there's you know by being um somebody that you know you you will have people that you've been working with across you know across the years in all the different like careers that you've like you know been in and all the different jobs that you've been in so you'll have this huge networking group of people who have their own expertise and knowledge into certain places and I think so bringing that to the table is amazing for a start so you've got so much to add to everybody else in the group but also especially if I suppose if you are thinking about um bringing business into your company so this is one of the things so if you're somebody who's you know looking to spread the word of how great your company is and whatever it offers then actually being in a networking group is great because you're then tapping into you know i don't know i guess hundreds of other women uh, when men, men and women and their own network so again your company depending on what role it is is going to be the one that gets mentioned by any of those women when somebody in their networks say oh i need a company that does blah oh actually i know a woman in a comp in a company who is great and actually i can actually connect you directly so and that's so i think you know, if you're looking to grow the company that you're in, then that's a really good thing. But especially if you have any desire to launch something like your own project, your own charity, your own business, 
any kind of entity that you are um, looking to build in some form, being part of a community like the Wikimama Network is incredible because you have got all of this expertise at your fingertips for people who have started from the ground up and who can tap you in with the right people here, there, everywhere. So very often, you know, whatever it is that you're launching, you might need at some point an I- a recommendation for how to launch a website or how to create a social media platform, you know, a presence, yeah. or you might even just be starting so small and all you really want to do is get a business card and a flyer. You've got then all of these people who've already done it before and know how to get you discounts and know how to get you the right people. So it's all of that. Like I I just think it's massively saves you time because you're shortcutting to recommendations is again, like as a bit going back to what you started with. Exactly. (laughs) I'm kind of, I consider myself a bit of a super connector in like, in those ways. And that's my kind of superpower because with Wiki Places for Kids, I'm connecting families with with attractions, you know, or families on days out and helping them create memories. With the Wiki Mama Network, it's about connecting businesses with other businesses or businesses with other individuals to, that will then help those businesses thrive and create new business opportunities and drive revenue and drive footfall and, um, you know, drive clients. And again, like in all these things, it's about how that that recommendation thing just it saves you so much time wasted money you know i i just think as well, there is a bias in the group towards mums but you don't have to be a mum but it just happens to be that lots of the women are already parents and we are i think at a time if i I'll speak on behalf of myself but i'm having lots of conversations at the moment and i feel like this is definitely a thing but we seem to be more time poor than ever life seems to be more busy and crazy than ever and when you are like that you can sometimes make a wrong decision because you're stressed or you you know or you just don't have time and therefore you procrastinate but if you've got yeah you've got the I think the procrastination is a huge thing with people like I don't have the time I'm trying to do this massive list rather than just doing one thing Exactly. If you've got 50 women at your fingertips that can all just go, don't worry about that, do that, and don't make that mistake because I made that, you're like, thanks. Phew. <laughs> and yeah. I think this is a really interesting point because something I like to talk about a lot is like, I feel sometimes, um, I don't know whether it's being English or a mum, we don't ask for help enough. And I think that's the point of, you know, whether you're not ready to join a networking group, but speaking to your friends and telling people what, having the confidence to tell, like, even if it's just five people what you want to do, and then those five friends could connect you to the right person and it's like thinking that you all like you said a great point you already have a network and I think that that's something your expertise is like great to tell us that of like a reminder it's okay to ask your friends for help whether it's something that they need to help you on practically or just a little bit of a kick up the bum or support I think that's a really good way of talking about your network and how all of us listening to this could be using probably their network better and it's okay it's you know okay to call your friends your network they are your network they are exactly and I mean I actually would say it's not only okay to ask I would actually say it's essential you know I think it's got to a point especially if you are in a networking group that you are paying for I would say the absolute minimum that you should be doing in that networking group is is whatever your ask is what is your ask for today because I can guarantee that there is someone in the group who can help with that, with an answer to it. And why sit there for another two or three days agonizing over it? You know, I think you're right. Maybe it's a British thing, but we don't, we feel like we don't want to burden other people with our, with what we're trying to do. We feel like we should try and do it all on, under our own strength. Yeah. And actually, you know, and I think aside from the business, especially as mums, sometimes we really don't want to ask for help in the mum field of things. You know, we want, you know, it, uh, it depends on what your family uh your family support network is like as well but I know I rarely ask for help you know I have asked my mum for help uh, more recently when things have been up and down you know ebbs and flows and whatever financially I suppose but I really hate asking I would I'm like it's almost like no give me more give me more I can take it <laughs> you know and I'm like balance 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 and it's almost like we've got to well, I say we but I think it is we, um, there's almost a pride factor of how much you can handle. You know, like sometimes what somebody will say to me, oh, Susie, you do so much. You like, you're managing this, you're managing that. How do you do it? And there's a little part of me inside that goes, "Hmm, well, (laughs) 
Thank you very much. You I know. am just fabulous. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like you're like, oh, look at me managing it all. But actually, really, how well am I managing it all? Like, we, mm. you know, the, the truth is, um, yeah, I've got all these things. I'm spinning all these plates. I am managing. I'm keeping it all afloat. But that doesn't drive like massive happiness. It certainly isn't driving massive revenue. Um, it's like how how much how much more thinly can you be spread before you actually just fall over and it's you know at what point could you have asked for help and actually it all you could have steadied that ship yeah sometimes as well you're in such a momentum of um whatever the you know sometimes I find that I haven't I haven't even allowed myself to think that I need to help and I, that I could possibly ask and you're just in this sort of bad Yes. Yeah. I had a conversation with one of my team about this recently and you, you don't even know how someone can help you because you've got yourself far too down yeah. the road instead of picking it up earlier. And I do wonder, I don't know, because I think I'm still in the early years with children and seeing friends still, you know, in the early time of getting pregnant, still having their first or seconds that I think as mums, you know, I don't know if anyone will agree with this or you will agree with this, but I see people are like, oh, I'm doing so well. I'm managing this. And I, I think because I'm like getting to a bit stage of, you know, my kids are now almost five and two. I'm like, I don't think this is true kind of thing. And I think we feel we put it on ourselves that I've seen other people nail this. So I'm going to nail it. And it's not yeah. like you're not nailing it. It's that you probably just need a little bit of support or a little bit of honesty. Yeah in there but we feel and it's like I do think there's a lot around motherhood of like no I'm gonna like I've not changed I've got this yeah. <laughs> and it's like and we know as you, we've seen in our journeys already like there's a whole heap of change that's gone on there <laughs> yeah no, <laughs> which exactly. is hard to handle and you, we need help during that time I think yeah. I fully like whether it's with your many businesses or just at home or with your children or just your how uh, your well-being even I think yeah. that's such a good point and um I also love that you brought up that phrase how do you do it because we kind of bring that up on the podcast kind of thing so it sounds like something you get asked a lot Susie yes yeah well I think because I've got three children two dogs you know <laughs> yeah. multiple businesses um and two dogs that's <laughs> the part <laughs> how <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I feel it sounds like uh women and mothers are asking for you because this is my point with yeah. the phrase because I know there's been a lot of like well no one's asking men how they do it but when my experience of being asked it it's normally like someone wants your magic secret sauce or someone has yeah. even said that about the podcast will tell someone tell me <laughs> how I can manage this all and I'm like yeah <laughs> hopefully yeah. but it is that's what I feel when people are asking it it's really like wow you know it's coming from a place of like you are amazing and how you manage to do all of this kind yeah. of thing and if you got any snippets on how like that how? what's your answer to that <laughs> yeah um I think um I think that how you feel is um, and how you manage things is so um, related to your attitude, if you know what I mean. Like you can 100% get up in the day in the morning and be thinking, oh, I've got all of this and like, you know, poor me and oh God, I can't manage. And Or you can just have this completely different attitude that like, cool I'm gonna crack on I I can do this like I I just I think I've got a really positive attitude and a really positive outlook and um I just try to bring energy to as much that I do and um you know just and I, and I guess I'm, I'm in a position now where I actually really enjoy what I do so it doesn't it, a lot of it doesn't necessarily feel like work like when I run the events or when I'm doing social media crash courses for people or workshops I love it because again I get to sit and talk to people and you know and the stuff that I'm doing. That taken away from you so you're yeah. probably still in that it, with your yeah. personality like yes. <laughs> Um, I love running the networking events and and the thing is as well you know like when we just mentioned something about how when people are not coping so well I think one of the things I really that really important to me about my network is that when I notice that someone's gone quiet and disappeared off you know for a while almost like they've gone dark I'm really conscious of it I'm an empath so somehow I manage to feel the energy from people if I think about it I can like tap in and I nearly always know if someone is 
gone down a hole, you know, and if they're about to leave, but usually they're about to leave because they're like, I feel like I'm an imposter. I don't feel like I'm, you know, and I always seem to know. And the thing is, I always tap in and I always say to them, I kind of try and go in and get them and pull them back out because I think sometimes that's what people need. And, and it's the same with business as much as sometimes you go into that dark hole with, in your, with your parenting, you know, like things get really hard. You're going through a bad phase. You don't feel like you're connecting with your kids. You don't feel like you understand them. You're shouting a lot. You're exhausted. You just can't see any joy, you know, and that doesn't seem, I mean, you don't love them. It really doesn't. It just means it's hard. And sometimes you just go into a dark space and you go quiet. And I think the same thing happens with business. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you're not connecting with people. Sometimes people aren't buying. You don't understand. You're putting all this effort in and yet you've got to get anything back. And then you can go quiet. And I think I just go in and, you know, find people in that little dark space and I pull them back out. And usually it's to do with overwhelm or it's to do with like, you know, you you just can't see what to do next. You can't take that step. And I've been doing this a really long time. I'm 42. You know, I've been working for myself, as I said, since 2012. Um, I've taken on that. I've had those pressures of over those months where you can't pay the bills and the months where you really can. And like I've been there so I can really share that. Yeah. But I think a tip that I would give if anybody is uh, asking for one is um, that you can say no. And I think sometimes when you're in early stages of business or in your early stages of like having children, even that you feel like you've got to say yes to every play date. You've got to say yes to every you know, request for coffee or every meeting. And like, I, you know, if it's business, it's yes to every meeting or yes to every business opportunity or yes to everything um, um, that, especially when it's free, lots of people will ask you for stuff, you know, can you donate to this? Can you come on this? Can you do that for me? Can you post that for me? Can, do you know what? It's actually okay to say no and to put its boundaries. Boundaries are such yeah. a, a huge, huge thing. And if I, you know, I'm saying this, like take my advice because I'm not using it, but sometimes I find that when I'm, when I have really strong boundaries, then I can ca carry and like a lot more and I can really spin all those plates when the boundaries are really blurred. For example, I don't, um, you know, I, I say, that I will do something for an hour, but then end up on it for two and a half hours, for example, you know, that sort of thing. Um, that's when you just have to control those boundaries for yourself. And then I think that makes things a lot more manageable because um, time is the thing that we're most, is the most precious commodity. Yeah. And so if you, you, can't, you can't like, and you, you, there's ways you can get more in a different way, but you literally like are with your time. And especially like you said, I, I've read that a lot where people are going from one to two or two to three kids because your time is still the same and then yeah. you're adding more into it. I think yeah. it's so helpful because I think boundaries are so important and something we can feel quite, I mean, I know myself, I feel uncomfortable. I, that Sometimes I'm really excellent at boundaries in some ways and other ways I'm not. Like you said, yeah. it's, I think I read something this morning about someone asking to meet you for a coffee and you want to say yes. And then then the reality is you've got to work you've got to think of ways to what's going to help your business or help your family and it's like well maybe this is something I have to say no to right now and that's really hard exactly there's something I, I, I like this analogy um and it's about the jar so if I think of myself as a jar and I've always been the jar and I've always basically been the same size jar ever since I was a fully grown adult I've been the same size jar but over time I've added a husband into that jar and then I've added a child and then another child and then another child so that means that my jar is a little bit more full and then I might have added a job in and actually that job has just got this big and this big and this big and this big you know and it's great and it's got so much bigger so now basically my jar which always had so much capacity in to put more stuff in is really full and it's got to a point especially more recently where I find that to be honest, my jar is at capacity and it's at the top. And so when other stuff starts to pop coming in, it all starts overflowing. And that's when you're, I call overflowing, losing my shit, you know, because and uh, it's no wonder because my jar is not getting any bigger. No. The jar is the same size. It's the same capacity as it always was. And so something's got to give like some sort of acceptance of, of that ebb and flow and that balance. And basically the top of the jar is the boundary, isn't it? Because oh, I love that analogy. I'm gonna <laughs> remember that. <laughs> if you've hit your boundary, you've hit got your a boundary. Boundary then in this yeah. one, yeah. If it's water, you can imagine it's just gonna flow out. And it's just gonna create a mess, and that's why I think you, your brain becomes a mess. Your life becomes, you know, you feel like you're out of control. But the one thing you can control really is just how much stuff is going in to that jar. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, I love that. That's, um, I think that is a fantastic point to end on because I feel like that is a soundbite we'll probably be using in lots of places, Susie, because I, I am a fan. Maybe I'll get a physical jar here and just Aww. pretend I've added stuff. So I'll be like, it's my Susie jar. I'll call it Susie. <laughs> Susie, thank you so much. Have you got anything you can share with us about what's next for either Wiki Places for Kids or Wiki Mama Network? So Wiki Places for Kids is just going from strength to strength. I just, you know, I'd love people to go over and have a look if uh, if they want some lovely, fresh and inspirational ideas for things to do with the family. Um, so I'm always looking for new places and I love exploring. So I think that will continue and the platforms. Um, I think I'd love to get a little bit of investment in at some point because I'm completely self-funded. Um, and um, But as we discussed before, sometimes getting investment is a proper full-time job and takes you off in a completely, you know, if I talk about my jar, I just have no room for, for trying to get investment in my jar right now. <laughs> so, have you looked into anything? Because we've got a whole host of different people, whether it's crowdfunding, VC or angels, uh, what sort of investment have, have you looked into anything? Just out of interest, this is like a whole conversation in itself. Yeah, so no, I, and I, won't go, for. I won't go nuts. Um, but it's, um, I think I've looked at crowdfunding. I have looked into an investment, um, angel investment um, as well. But I think um, probably the most likely thing for me would be crowdfunding at this point, just because of just where I am with the business. But I just haven't got the brain capacity to go there. And so unfortunately, I think I kind of go around in circles in terms of the growth um, strategy for that business, because it really just needs but it needs an um you know an injection of of, of cash now um so but so that's that but the really exciting thing i think is where the network is going um i as i said I'm, i am a super connector i just love like putting women together giving women these opportunities i've managed to get one of the women as products into a really big lifestyle retailer in melton Keynes. um another one i've given a um an opportunity to you know almost franchise her business into another place so i just love connecting um people together i think the, the network ideally would continue to grow my my first um goal would be to reach 100 women as i said so if you're if you're somebody out there who just really would love to get a lovely community around you but wants to build connections wants to build support but also clients revenue and you know an income to the business then i think that we could definitely be for you um and i think that's 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 the trajectory right now uh the wiki network i, I just when I run these events and things for for my um, attractions, again, it is still connecting. It's still connecting families with places. It's and I'm giving opportunities to the women in the network. So one of the recent events we did, I managed to have three of the girls went in as speakers. Um, another went in to jump to demo. Another went in as a makeup artist and a hairdresser. Um, and then a whole bunch of the women actually went in um, and were models for the event. So everyone got paid. So it was win, win, win. So it was oh. like the venue, you know, benefited. I got paid for my role and everyone else who was there as well. And it's just like, I can see so many more of these things happening and it's really exciting. Oh, that's so exciting, Susie. So um, where can our audience find you um, online? So I am um, at Wiki Places for Kids underscore official. That is my main account um, that I'm always active on. The Wiki Mama Network is at Wiki Mama Network. Um, and if you want to have a look for ideas for the summer holidays, then it would be wikiplacesforkids.com. Excellent. Well, again, thank you so much, Susie. Um, you have been listening to Bump to Business Owner with your host, Caroline Marshall. And thank you again for joining us, Susie. Thank you for having me. I loved it. <laughs>